this morning. Um, I think it's imperative that uh, there are several groups that need to be mentioned um, who, who were instrumental in the formulation of this budget. Uh, oh, I gotta, guess I gotta turn that on. First, uh, the board members, and if you could please stand, um, I just want to get a sense of, I want people to get a sense of how many people were involved in this process. So John Conrad, president of the board. Steve Smith, the vice president. Ralph Swift, the treasurer. Bob Sawyer, the secretary time chair rep. Misty Keys, the developer representation. And Jeannie Miller and Phil Birdsall. Uh, along with these, these members were also very instrumental in creating the budget. Bruce Cox, the chairman, Dick Heath, Julie Cook, Gary Fitch, John Jay, Ron Carnes, and the incoming members, Mac Manning and Pete Campions. Uh, if you could all stay standing just for one minute. <laughs> and of course, our senior management team, Bob Weber, the general manager, Josh James, who is, is represented by Andy. I saw him a second ago. Uh, Pat Davis, uh, Bruce Evans, myself, Jeff Houston, Sam, Mary Jo, William, Becky, and Chief Mike Williams. So you can get a sense of how many people is involved in this budget process just from the look around the room. Um, again, I'd like to thank all those people uh, for helping us develop this. I want to tell you that this process started back in July. Um, and I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I just want to give you a sense of what the process was. Uh, in July, all the senior managers were given their budget templates, which they compiled based on their needs and uh, some of the key factors that they all use. From there, each manager was assigned uh, one, and then sometimes two, uh, members of the FAC, where their budget was examined, dissected, and put back together. After that, uh, after that process happened, the FAC met along with the board guidelines and put together the best budget according to the board um, guidelines. After that, the uh, budget was then presented in a working shop form with the board and some of the details were ironed out. And uh, after that, we finally have what we're going to present today. So you can see it, it's a process that takes about five months. So it's, uh, and trust me, there's not always agreement on every issue, but we try and fill the guidelines and we try and do the best we can. So in saying that, this presentation basically is going to cover the guiding principles that we used. Uh, we're going to go over the sewer system, the properties of, Property Owners Association Fund, the amenities, uh, we're going to look at the POA and amenities combined. Uh, we're going to take a look at the debt, the master plan improvements, and then we'll have some time for some question and answers um, if you so have any. So firstly, uh, we'll look at the 10-year vision, and this hasn't really changed from last year. Fairfield Glade will continue to be a growing resort community and become the best value master plan community in the U.S. Along with that, our mission statement, the Fairfield Glade Community Club will continuously improve the resort lifestyle experience while fostering and promoting a strong sense of community. And really, when doing this budget, we really took that last part, a strong sense of community, into consideration when we were doing this. So what were our 2018 guiding principles? Well, the first one was to improve the existing infrastructure roads, walking trails, the sewer system, and the general appearance in Fairfield Glade. Uh, continue the recommended maintenance program on our existing facilities. Uh, continue the master plan for facility improvements, uh, a new police department building, the Stonehenge Turf Care Center, uh, the racket center improvements, and the planning for a new concert park near Muir Lake. Uh, you have to excuse me if I call the Stonehenge Cur Turf Care Center, the golf course maintenance facility, or several other topics it's been called, but basically it's all the same. And of course, the last and bullet point which people are most interested in is keeping dues and fees at a reasonable rate. Um, we've had a great year in terms of home building. Uh, we're up to levels uh, preceding 2011 
and with Tom Anderson on board, we expect, to be honest, we really don't know what to expect, but we're at least expecting to stay the same as the current year. Uh, we've seen a, a rapid growth in the Hickory Ridge area and some of the other builders as well. So that's very encouraging from a standpoint of both a dues base and of course usage base because new members always bring in um, new talent. So let's talk about the sewer service fund. Uh, there are no increases in the sewer service fee planned for this current budget. Uh, your monthly fee will remain at $30. Just to go over a little part about it, revenues have slightly decreased as we're unsure about future areas such as Hickory Ridge being developed and therefore have scaled back a little bit on the TAP fees and as on the capacity fees. Um, that's the main decrease in the revenue is because we had such an explosion this year with the development, like I said, of Hickory Ridge. There was a large portion that came on, came on service this year. So, we don't know if we can, expense, uh, we can expect that in the next year. Uh, there's a slight increase in expenses, which is in part ensuring that our staff stay on par with their peers in the industry, as we have several skilled positions which are very costly to replace. There's also additional testing which is required by the state, and correct me if I'm wrong on that, but, but that will um, increase permitting costs. There are also quite a few grinder pumps which are required to be replaced this coming year per the schedule of expected life on these grinder pumps. And as you know, everyone has a grinder, well, I won't say everyone, Gary. <laughs> Almost everyone has a grinder pump in the ground that is attached to the sewer system. Those all have an expected life, and as you know, they, they get worked pretty good. So they, there's a schedule of replacement for all those, and uh, we have quite a few coming up this year. Um, for your capital, one of the, you see a big increase in capital uh, expenditures, and to give you an idea of what we're talking about, the big one here is the secondary force main, approximately $1.2 million. Um, that will allow the, the system to function at its highest capacity. Uh, it will remove some of the inefficiencies currently in the system. So really that is the big uh, project planned. Uh, additionally, there'll be a trailer for offices. Uh, if any of you have been down to the um, wastewater treatment plant, uh, you'll notice there is definitely a lack of office space. And with the increased testing required, uh, there's need for testing environments which are fairly uh, clean. Additionally, uh, if you have been out there, and uh, let me go back two slides here, uh, you see all these mixers that go on in the ponds, um, they are in the water. So they have to be serviced by a boat. Uh, and as Bruce will tell you, I think, what, three fell in this year? Uh, and if that's your job, I'm sure you don't want to be in there. Um, so one of the expenses this year is a complete mix aerator, which will now blow the, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, like fans blow oxygen into the, into the uh, ponds on the, on the uh, periphery. Uh, these will use less oxygen, uh, sorry, not less oxygen, less power, and will be able to be surfaced from the shore. Um, so increase uh, safety and also increase, uh, decrease the uses of electricity. Uh, the vehicle is a replacement vehicle and um, that, and uh, we have our usual expansions in there, about $50,000. That is given, of course, uh, based on development. Now the property association fund or the POA fund. Uh, we'll go over monthly fees, the cash flow, and the capital budget. In terms of POA monthly dues, there'll be a $2 increase in dues. And that is, of course, tiered depending on what kind of lot you have, whether you have an A lot, a B lot, or a C lot. Uh, C lots are 65% of A's and B's are 85% of A's. Uh, and as always, 75% of that goes to operations, 25% uh, of that goes to capital. There'll be no increase in the trash fees and uh, the additional $1 that we increased it last year 
will continue to be placed in a reserve fund for a new garbage truck. So that's not going to change from what we had this year. Uh, so your monthly total, for your, if you're a home on sewer, you have $58 of dues, $30 for the sewer, $8 for the trash, that comes to a total of $96 a month. If you're on septic, it's $58, $8 for trash, so it's $66 a month. And many fees and lot transfer fees, there's no changes there. Um, so getting to the cash flow. Overall, revenues will increase by approximately $137,000. Uh, now you also may notice that expenses are due to increase approximately by $450,000. One of the increases is um, an almost, and, and as we know, we're a very labor intensive um, industry. So here we have approximately about a 3.8% increase in healthcare costs. Uh, additionally, there are other positions which we did not fill in 2017, which still need to be filled. There's approximately five of those positions which have been empty uh, for the majority of the year. One of the other increases is a more regular termite treatments for our wood buildings. Uh, we have not been doing this and, and really uh, some of this is really important. Uh, landscaping costs for Stonehenge Drive and replacing outdated equipment in the garage and the facilities maintenance areas. Uh, another one of the major costs, which is sort of behind the scenes, but important nonetheless, is uh, conversion to Office 2016. Unfortunately, our licenses are expiring on all our uh, computer systems, and uh, they're no longer su uh, supported by Microsoft and have to be changed to the current uh, version. Uh, some of the capital projects which are planned for the POA, I know this is a lot, uh, I'm just going to touch on some of them. The first one, the Champion Roller, there is still ongoing negotiations whether we should buy a new one. This is, of course, for um, chip and seal and, and that kind of road work. There are still negotiations going on whether we should rent one for the time we need it, buy one, or if the one we still have is, is able to be repaired and, and to get functional again. So again, these are just, uh, we put these in there just in case because we don't want to have to go back and, and, and put it on there. Again, we have some of the replacement trucks which have now passed their useful life. Uh, we plan to purchase one lake patrol boat and refurbish one other so that we will have patrol boats at both of the lakes and that other one will be able to trans transfer between the lakes. Um, one of the big areas is the sanitation truck area, wash area. Currently, uh, we do not have an area where we wash down our garbage trucks. And, and of course, as we all know, the EPA and the Tennessee Department of Environmental Protection Agency uh, is very strict on where you wash down garbage trucks uh, because, of course, the nature of the material in it. So they're asking us to build a special uh, wash area where we'll be able to wash down the garbage trucks. Um, so the facility building repairs, it's actually a long list of minor repairs or minor additions we have on each of the buildings. We have a lot, uh, quite an extensive schedule, and this is really where we make sure that the buildings are kept up to date, all fixes are made, and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's only $25,000 for walking trails. Uh, in discussion with Sam and the Trails Committee, one of the main reasons why we've lowered it this year, and I know most of the years it was upwards of 50, is because of the Peavine Road construction. Um, a lot of the trails they have currently going have to either crisscross or some form of come in some corner of contact with the Peavine Road uh, expansion. So they've held off on a lot of their trails expansion until that road is completed. Some of the master planned projects, the big one of course is the police department building uh, for approximately 500,000 um, and upgrades to the fire station on Peavine Road for about 50,000 and an overall master plan community uh, planning uh, which Bob, I think we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, so these are the big things um, in the amenities. i uh, sorry, in the Property Owners Association. Now I'd like to touch on the amenities. First we're going to look at golf. Uh, we're going to look at some of the rounds information, the golf fees, the cash flow, and the capital. Uh, unfortunately, as Jeff could 
tell you this year has been a disaster weather-wise. We have not seen or projected rounds this low in quite some time. I think when I look back, it's been at least 10, 11 years since we've had rounds this low. Um, unfortunately, as you'll see by the next slide, it's completely controlled by the weather. Uh, as you can see, we've only been open 1,250 days this year, or projected to be open only 1,250 days. Last year, we were open 1,401 days. Um, again, looking back at the historical numbers, there has never been a year where we've had such wet conditions that we have not been able to be open uh, as much as we have been in the past. Um, the good news is that when we are open, there's no decrease in play. So a lot of people talk about this. This is the, the one piece of good news. A lot of people say rounds are down while people are not playing or you know, people are giving up the game or whatever. Uh, this really shows you that's not the case. We've actually had one less round per day we're open. So they want to play, it's just the weather has prevented that. Uh, golf fees. Golf fees are expected to increase by one dollar. Um, and really the driving force behind that, and we're going to touch on this in a, in a second, is really the capital projects which are planned for the golf. Uh, a little bit about the cash flow. Um, with much better weather, we hope, obviously that's something we cannot control, we're expecting an uh, increase in revenues of approximately $617,000. Of course, with the additional rounds, <coughs> excuse me, come additional expenses. Uh, Jeff also has included in his budget two promotions. Um, so that factors into that, as well as um, what, one of those promotions being the golf course superintendent who departed at the end of 2016. Um, pretty stable on the capital expenditures. Um, and one of the points we made, one of the, the areas that we talked about was whether we keep the same uh, principal and interest payments that we are paying on the debt or we reduce them to what the required payments are currently. Uh, between the board and the FAC, we decided that it's most prudent to uh, decrease those to the required payments uh, because of some of the large capital payments that we have coming in the future and currently. <clears throat> the rationale behind this, of course, was the fact that if we kept the payments the same, we reduced the cash balance and then we'd have to go out and borrow money anyway. So you're borrowing money at a higher rate than what we already got. Um, so some of those capital additions, uh, Heather Hurst's fleet of golf carts, as you know, one of, if you don't know, one half of the golf carts were replaced last year. The other half will re re be replaced this year. Um, his usual resurfacing of cart pass, <coughs> the uh, carts and equipment, and the big project, of course, is the, <coughs> again, I called it the facility here, Stonehenge Golf Course Maintenance uh, Center, which is approximately $600,000 $600, of uh, phase one. Uh, food and beverage. Everybody likes to talk about food and beverage, so let's just skip over it. No, kidding. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Josh, and of course Andy is here as well, uh, and AWE for stepping in full throttle late in the year to, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me, to turn around um, our food and beverage operation. In just a few months, they have reorganized the department, started to reorganize the infrastructure along with the menu. And as we all know, as I've heard many times in many meetings, Rome was not built in one day. And I ask you to be a little patient with them as they continue to make changes that will enhance the customer experience. So one of the things we'll talk about is revenues per cover, the cash flow for food and beverage, the capital. Uh, so one of the things we have, and, and this may be hard for some people to see in the back, but uh, last year we had approximately uh, $15 revenue per cover um, and you can see that has decreased to about almost $14 uh, revenue per cover. That is changes in the menu mix and uh, items like that. We expect with the new menu the revenue per cover to increase <coughs> as well as the experience increases. 
for food and beverage revenues are expected to increase about for $170,000. However, again, once again, since it is a service, uh, we are only decreasing expenses by about 36000 Again, I remind you that this is a process and will take some time, but we are definitely on the road to get there. So we will continue, to, and we have, for the next few years, uh, budgeted for this value to come down. Uh, some of the equipment, uh, China glasses, thank you so much is about $10,000 and some, uh, like I said, replacing of the infrastructure, mainly the kitchen equipment, about $20,000. So total capital is about 30. The tennis center, or racket center, I should say. Uh, we're going to go there again. There are no rate increases expected for the racket center. Uh, we'll look at the cash flow, the capital, so for the racket center, um, revenues are expected to increase by about 8,000, with, inc with expenses increasing about 2.5 thousand. Um, overall, the, the big aspect of here is the, uh, the capital expenditures which we are experiencing. And I'm actually gonna go back to sli uh, one slide here. <coughs> one of the big projects we have, and and this was brought to us um, is you can see all the dark spots on the ceiling of the tennis center if you can see that from where you're sitting uh, so one of the aspects of our capital is lighting for the indoor courts um, William has worked with several people to make sure that the they're we're reducing the amount of dark spots and making the court more visible uh, we have some resurfacing of the clay courts, uh, minor <coughs> furniture, uh, but the big one is the uh, phase one of the tennis center improvements. What this includes is basically uh, restrooms at the north end of the facility, correct, north end. Uh, this will serve both indoor and outdoor uh, facilities. Um, so this is the first part of the improvements. Um, other improvements are being discussed by the racket committee and uh, are still in the planning phases as renovations are planned for the tennis center to last till about 2020. Uh, the marinas. Again, no rate increases are budgeted for the marinas. We look at the cash flow, then the capital. Uh, for the marinas, we're expecting revenues to increase by about by about $23,000. <clears> Again, like golf, uh, the marinas have been an extreme victim to weather. And we've seen a decrease in revenues to that. Um, expenses are expected to increase about 21K. Again, as you know, when we have a facility like tennis or like golf or like the marinas or anything that's outdoors, obviously once the rainy conditions shut it down, the people are sent home. So obviously we save on payroll. The more we're open, the more payroll costs we're going to have. So it's reflective of that. Some of the items for the marinas to add three more pedal boats. Um, this, um, backtrack a little bit. It's not adding three more pedal boats. This is replacing some of those pedal boats that are now um, in, in a state of that will cause us, cost us more to repair them than it would to buy new. So this is really replacing. Uh, we have three of the pontoon boats that need to be refurbished uh, and a purchase of one of the pontoon boats. So total capital about $44,000. The CCC and recreation. Again, no rate increases. We're gonna look at the cash flow and the capital. Uh, for the CCC, <coughs> the decrease in revenues, really, uh, I must tell you, uh, we had about, I think, close to $20,000 in merchandise sales due to the solar eclipse. <laughs> uh, so I have put in a good word with Mother Nature to ask her for another beautiful weather event that hopefully happens in the sum summertime when it's sunny outside so we can sell merchandise for it. But really, that is a one-time thing that, we've, that we were lucky to have this year. 
Um, we are also adding, and if you've seen the, the, uh, the former amusement room, I guess I'll call it now the former amusement room, we'll be adding a, a golf simulator, which uh, at the moment we have very conservatively budgeted for in terms of revenue. Uh, we expect it obviously to surpass that amount, but with anything new, you want to be on the conservative side first. So um, that's what we looked at. And we'll go over some of the capital projects here. Um, the one, uh, I'd like to point out, first of all, the Robin Hood Park. Now, you, Bob has presented several pictures of, of the first addition to Robin Hood Park. And from a standpoint, remember that this first $190,000 that is money that we received from the state on the sale of that uh, right away, or is it called right away? I'm assuming it's the right away. Yeah. The right away for the, when they did the road expansion. So that is monies we received from the state earmarked, that were earmarked for improvements to Robin Hood Park. Uh, and again, the new bandstand, once again, we do not have any land donation at the current time. We have put monies in the budget but that's all depending on uh, where we go from there. Uh, so now look at, let's look at the PLA and amenities combined. Um, so overall, excess from the property owners fund will be about 132,000. Excess from the amenities will be approximately 47,000, which will leave us a projected ending cash balance of 1.4 million. Um, so we're budgeting approximately with the amenities and the property owners fund about $17.2 million in revenue and about $17 million in expenses. So that's where we get those figures from. So total operating sur cash surplus of uh, $179,600. The, re uh, the capital portion of this, we're showing capital revenues of uh, 2.6 million, and again, you may ask why the decline. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the, for lack of a better word, overabundance of amenity fees we've received in the current year. Um, we've, we're, I think we're about $130,000 more than we budgeted for amenity or transfer fees, amenity transfer fees. So we're taking that more a little bit in line. Uh, total capital purchases for the amenities is about 905000 Total capital purchases for the Property Owners Association is almost 600000 uh, Master plan projects for amenities totals to about one point, almost $1.2 million. Uh, master plan projects for the Property Owners Association is about $600,000. Total interest in principal will be about $454,000. Um, so we'll have a capital loss of a million, but at our ending cash balance, we'll still be over a million uh, dollars. Debt service, uh, as you know, we have technically, well, not technically, we have four uh, debt. We have the wastewater treatment plant, which at the end of 2018 will be at a half a million dollars. The fiber optic system with, at the end of 2018 will be 91,000. The Stonehenge debt, which at the end of 18 will be 1.3 million. And the community center, which will be 750,000. So we're going from three points, we'll be lowering our debt by about a million, a little over a million dollars, sorry, a little under a million dollars uh, by the end of 2018. Uh, the big points here, the community set debt ends in April 2023, the fiber optic in February of 2020, the sewer at the end of 2019, uh, the Stonehenge debt is a 15 year amortization with three five year sections. So really those sections are any time you're able to get out and uh, although really we can get out whenever we want. I mean, if we pay it off, okay. So, the big question, of course, everybody has is, where does my $58 go to? Uh, so we broke it out, and, I, and you can tell how many sections there are because they're lines, but uh, 17, almost $18 of that, or 30% of it, goes to community maintenance. Uh, six cents, or 
less than 1% goes to the ACC. Uh, $16, almost $17 or 28% goes to general and admin expenses. Uh, $8.15 or 14% goes to the police department. Uh, $1 or 2% goes to the fire department. Uh, $2.60 or 4% goes to the racket center. Uh, $6.18 or 11% goes to the CCC. 